What's going on, people? Man, I have something to get off my chest. And I can't believe that I sat here and contemplated about it for hours before I actually made this audio. Because I didn't want to hurt anyone's feelings or anything like that. And then all of a sudden, uh, something came to my, my, my mind. Abdul, you make videos about your opinion. If you don't agree with a person, that's fine. Do you. And that's what I'm going to do. But there is a, um, a subject that I feel strongly about. And I can no longer, no longer, I can't even talk, no longer hold this mouth of mine. It's time for me myself to speak up about this. Now, I'm going to read you a post written by a young lady who I told I'm not going to mention her name. But we've always kind of disagreed on this subject. So I'm going to let you guys be the judge. Now, this is the post. Black on black customer service is a serious crime. What you have. Oh, she means what you have an attitude for. She's talking about someone that was ringing her up in customer service. Ring my ish up and put a smile on your face. She's talking about the young lady who happens to be African-American. Don't come with your attitude. Now, let me just stop right there. Some of you guys may think this is just an isolated incident between one person. That's true. But those of you who know me know I've traveled every city in this United States of America. And if I missed any, when I say every city, okay, every state, I put it like that. Um, and I doubt if I missed, maybe I missed New Hampshire and uh, Rhode Island, but any other state I've been there. So I've seen certain people and I, I'm just telling the naysayers, I'm giving them, uh, their, their, their explanation. I'm not saying that all black women act like this for God's sake. My sister who happens to be black my mother who happens to be black and cousins and things like this um a lot of them i don't see exhibit this behavior so i'm only talking about a certain demographic of women a demographic that has this attitude where the world revolves around them they have a negative attitude and they think that everybody is just supposed to bow down and deal with that attitude and for some reason i've seen this exist far more in the south I don't know for this particular demographic. I don't know if this is something that they just have in as a habit, but I've been to fast food restaurants, customer service areas, restaurants, and a lot of them come and it's, it's almost like as they're coming toward you, the attitude is getting worse and what you want. I don't know about that. Just real impatient. Now this young lady is complaining about that. So, Here's my response. Now, keep in mind, I'm going to tell you, too, I've disagreed on a lot of the issues that she's had with so with black um, um, African-Americans. So I think she's taking this into the argument. So she's complaining about that. And it seems like she's the only one that can complain because I said these type of women. Remember, I'm not talking about the whole race. I said type of women are where the stereotype angry black woman comes from. Which is true because everybody thinks that when they see those women, oh, my gosh, are all black women impatient, you know, angry or whatever. And I haven't met every black woman, so I don't know. But I'm telling you that this particular demographic that follows this pattern, um, they can give it to you, the anger. But as soon as you give it back, then all of a sudden it's a problem. So I thought when I made that comment, we're great to go. You're good to go. Right. But then she didn't like the comment. Then all of a sudden, the uh, the movement changed, right? And her response when I made that comment was, "Let me just make sure I start where I, where I was doing it at." Yeah, but there are more women who aren't like that. But with black people, they always let the minority dictate us as a whole. Okay, now. She complained about that person and she mentioned the word black on black crime. But when I say that, yeah, that does exist. 
No, but with black people, they look at the minority and dictate us as a whole. So I said, well, that minority, speaking of that particular demographic, seems to always work in customer service. It's definitely not all. Stating it again. But for some reason, down south, which is what I said over, it's all over. In other places I've been, like Phoenix, Seattle, Las Vegas, California, is not as bad, which is this, which it isn't. And I don't know if that's because of the diversity in that place, meaning like if you go to the biggest cities, you see African-Americans a lot of times mingling with other races. But being that it's so segregated in the South, usually uh, African-Americans tend to be like more immigrants. What do I mean by that? Somalis, when you see Somalis, uh, like go to the coffee shop, a lot of Somalis hang with Somalis. A lot of Ethiopians hang with Ethiopians. And a lot of them do that because when they come from their countries, they want to get comfortable right away. So they come with people who look like them and talk their language and they blend in in that community. And that's how they start. So down south, you have a lot of black people who just hang with black people. And then the whites hang with the whites. There's not much uh, intermingling when it comes to the races. So that could actually be one of the problem. So later on, she goes to say, and I don't even know where this comes from. I get the worst treatment from Asians. So I can't put it all on black women. And I'm like, why are we talking about Asians? <laughs> where do Asians come from? Now, let me just stop there and just say what I'm about to say. The real problem here, people, is this. I'm going to paint the picture for you. Let's say Joey is out smoking weed. And one of the parents that knows Joey's mom sees Joey smoking weed. So she comes over and she knocks on the door. Joey mom's come to the door and she said, hey, Carol, how's it going? Oh, well, it's going great. I, I have some bad news for you. OK, what's the bad news? I caught Joey smoking weed. Psst. Carol, whatever. I know my son. My son would never smoke weed. And I have a problem with you coming over here telling me my son has smoked weed. Get out of my door right now and don't come see me again. Now, is that a mom dealing with the truth? Or a mom trying to cover up something that could be true? You see, when I would hear black comedians always make jokes about white people right you know and a lot of these jokes were humiliating you know like hi oh, you want to meet a white guy with the you know with the pants you know just like crazy jokes but if a white comedian was to do the same there's problems why is there a problem because of slavery so let me say something is slavery a pass for black people to misbehave Affirmative action, we need it. We can say negative things about whites on television and, and not get fired about it. Yes. But when a white person says something negative about a black person, they get fired. Yes, because of slavery. We can have black colleges, but we protest. Oh, I'm just hitting my bottle here. But we protest when there's some, uh, you know, this some discriminative things that goes on in a white college. But then when someone from another race goes to a Caucasian, you know, if someone from another race goes to a black college and, you know, they're white boy and, and all of these other type of things. You see, in case you guys didn't know, I'm an Amer African American guy. That's me. But just because I'm African American doesn't mean that I'm going to be on the side of Al Sharpton and those guys just because I'm African-American. You know, all of us, a lot of us, um, claim to be Christians and, and religious people and all this. So hypocrisy has basically became okay. It's okay for me to be wrong, but you can't be wrong. If that isn't the most spoiled brat I can't deal with the issues problem. I don't know what is like this whole black on black, no black lives matter thing. I, I saw a quote the other day and I want to throw it out to you guys and you tell me what you think. 
Um, why does black lives? It says something about black lives matters does not matter to black people. And then as soon as you say that argument, you have people to say this. I am tired. I am tired, sick and tired of when you mention a white cop killing a black person that somehow they keep bringing up black people killing black people. I don't want to hear it. Okay, did you deal with the problem or did you focus on one problem and didn't deal with the other? Because it does happen. So for anybody who thinks like that, I want to ask you a question. Can you deny that most of the deaths that happen in black communities come from black people? Proven. Most of the crime that comes in Caucasian communities come from white people. Yes, because when people kill, they kill in their comfort zone. That may sound like the most strangest things ever, but it's true. They kill in their comfort zone. Two guys could be living in the same neighborhood, killing each other over a game color or some type of dispute. And in that neighborhood, both of these guys happen to be black. That's just what it is. In Somali communities and Ethiopian communities, it's the same thing. Right. So all I want is this. Let's be 100 percent honest. Don't take up for somebody because they're a certain race. Don't take up besides because, you know, somebody because they're your son or they're this or they're that. Take up for the right. If you can't stand up for what's right, you can't stand up for nothing. You might as well stop going to church. You might as well stop this because there's excuses, excuses, excuses. Slavery, sl slavery is done. Everybody keeps telling me about the Jewish people, and I'm going to end this here. The Jewish people are probably some of the most wealthiest group of people on the planet. But what they went through in Germany was horrible. But what people don't understand is there's a blessing that you can get out of hardship. Either you could do one or two things, complain about what happened or become come back even stronger. And I think the Jews came back very strong. They're not letting an incident that happened in history hold them back, just like anyone else shouldn't. That's like saying my dad is an alcoholic, right? And he beat us all this time. And then I have to be an alcoholic or this is why I'm not successful. Nope. Many people who are orphans, who father died when they were younger or killed. Mom was killed have came back and they have became successful. The only person that's stopping you from being successful is you. So sorry for the long rant, but it's time to stop this madness. It's time for people to stop lying to each other and saying that, uh, I want to, why the white cop kid, whatever. Uh, why did this? Why did that? You know, I'm just like, come on. Right. Deal with the issue that has happened. Like if that happened, if, if a black guy gets get killed or a white guy gets killed, investigate that, right? On both sides. But one way I think to stop all killing is to become law-abiding citizens. To not resist the rest. To just do what you need to do for yourself and for your family. And I'm not just talking about black, uh, black men or women. I'm talking about anybody. You know, I haven't been stopped by a cop for God knows how long. And the last time I was stopped was because I was speeding. I got my speeding ticket, didn't yell, shout. He gave me my thing and boom, I was gone. Just like anybody else should be going. But what do you think about this? I want to hear it from you. And don't be afraid to talk if you're not, um, you know, an African-American because my channel is diverse. I have all views and no one would be put down or anything because you guys know me. Um, well, to some people, I'm this coon because I speak against the black people, you know, and and, that, and that's I know I said the other thing I was going to say last. But here is something else. This coon madness. Uncle Tom madness because you speak out against. But it's look, 
you can't get emotional about an argument. And just because you're emotional, you're right. No. If you approach an argument not trying to be right, just stating your facts, and the other person state their facts, listen to the other person. And then move from there. But we got to stop this. We got to be truthful people. We can't say it's right for one race and then wrong for another race. We have to be down the line equal on both sides. And that's what I have to say on that, people. So with that said, guys, thank you. I hope I didn't talk too long. I want to see you comment and let's tear up this subject. So until next time, signing off.